While baseball is a team sport, every single team has a best player. For some teams, it's a pitcher. For some teams, it's a hitter. For some teams, it's really obvious. Where for others, the choice just isn't that clear. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you who the best player is on every single Major League Baseball team. Of course, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to leave a like on. It's the best way to support the channel. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy the content. If you love baseball, this is the place you need to be. Get down in the comment section. Let me know if I missed anyone, if I got someone wrong. I mean, you, you guys will do it. You love to let your opinions be heard. And remember to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Giraffe Mark, links in the description to both of those. I'm always talking about baseball over there as well. So now it's time for me to tell you who the best player is on every single Major League Baseball team. For the Baltimore Orioles, this was an extremely tough choice. Not a very good team, not a lot of great players. But upon further review, it seemed that Trey Mancini is the best player the Baltimore Orioles have. He's fairly young coming in at 27 years of age. In the last two seasons for the Orioles, he's hit 24 home runs in each. While his average and on-base percentage has fluctuated the past two seasons, it is clear that he's probably their most consistent player that is still on this roster. While Mancini's batting average, on-base, and slugging has fluctuated the last two seasons, it is clear on a Baltimore Orioles roster filled with players trying to prove themselves to earn another contract that Trey Mancini is the best player on the Orioles. When talking about the Boston Red Sox, there is one player that is clearly the best player on this team, and that is Mookie Betts. Now don't get me wrong, Chris Sale, JD Martinez, insanely good players, but when you're talking about the best player on the Red Sox, it is Mookie Betts and it's not even close. Mookie Betts is the second best player in all of baseball. He was the MVP back in 2018, three-time gold glove winner, three-time all-star. Mookie Betts is gonna get on base for you. He's gonna hit for average. He's gonna hit home runs. 40 plus doubles every single season that he's played in Major League Baseball. If you're not picking Mookie Betts as the best player for the Red Sox, what game are you watching? The New York Yankees are loaded with talent, especially young players. But the clear best player on the New York Yankees has to be Aaron Judge. We all know about his insane Rookie of the Year season back in 2017 where he hit 52 home runs and finished second in the MVP voting. While his numbers were down in 2018, only playing in 112 games due to injury, Aaron Judge is clearly the best player on the New York Yankees. So Yankee fans, I don't think you can even get me on this one because I'm right. Aaron Judge is your best player. The Toronto Blue Jays, another team that was very tough to decide because right now their major league roster, well, it's not great. And their best player is currently in AAA, Vlad Guerrero Jr. But for the purpose of this video, I think I have to pick someone that is currently on the major league roster and that's going to be Justin Smoke. Back in 2017, he had his breakout season hitting a career high 38 home runs. 29 doubles, hit 270 with a 355 on base, 529 slugging, and on a roster where Vlad Guerrero Jr. has not yet played a game, Justin Smoke is the best player for the Toronto Blue Jays. I know Marcus Stroman is there, but look at his numbers. It's Justin Smoke. The surprise team thus far of the 2019 season, Tampa Bay Rays, has a ton of talent. Two of their best players they got from a trade for Chris Archer last year in Austin Meadows and Tyler Glasnow, but the best player on the Tampa Bay Rays roster has to be Blake Snell. Cy Young Award winner in 2018, broke out last year with a 1.89 ERA, winning 21 games, a .974 whip. Blake Snell has proved that he is the best player on the Tampa Bay Rays roster. The Chicago White Sox, again, another team with a ton of young talent. Juan Mankat is finally showing that potential that everyone saw when he was traded for Chris Sale, but he is not the best player on the White Sox just yet. The best player on the White Sox has to go to Jose Abreu, who has been doing it for quite some time in Chicago. Abreu hits home runs, he hits doubles, he even hit six triples back in 2017. He's just a fantastic hitter. So for the White Sox, it's gotta be Jose Abreu. For the Minnesota Twins, it came down to two players for me, Eddie Rosario and Jose Barrios. While Jose Barrios is without a doubt the best pitcher on the Twins, for the best overall player, I have to go with Eddie Rosario. The last two seasons, he's averaged 25 homers, 30 plus doubles, 150 plus hits. While Rosario might not be the flashiest or coolest player in baseball, he has been extremely valuable to the Minnesota Twins the last two seasons and will continue to be one of their most important players in 2019 because he's the best player on that team. For the Kansas City Royals, there's not a lot of talent on this roster just yet. You have Adalberto Mondesi who looks like he's going to be a great player for them in the future, but as of right now, the best player on the Kansas City Royals is Whit Merrifield. Yes, another South Carolina Gamecock. Whit Merrifield led the American League in hits last year with 192. Two, led the league with 45 stolen bases. Again, another player that's not going to be hitting 40 home runs a year, but when you look at his numbers, you can see that Whit Merrifield makes the Kansas City Royals a better team. I couldn't imagine how many games they would win without him. So for those reasons, Whit Merrifield is the best player on the Royals. Highly debated in the baseball community is who is the better player for the Cleveland Indians, Jose Ramirez or Francisco Lindor. Every single season since 2016, Jose Ramirez has improved, finishing third in the MVP voting in 2017 and 2018. He's a really good player, but there's someone who's better, and that guy is Francisco Lindor. He is the best player on the Cleveland Indians. Not only does he play the field well, but he hits like a beast. 
30 plus homers a year, 170, 180 hits every single season, and OPS in the 850s. It's an extremely tough choice to pick between Ramirez and Lindor, but I've got to go with my boy Francisco Lindor as the best player for the Cleveland Indians. This is probably going to be my most controversial pick, but I'm going to have to go with Nick Castellanos as the best player on the Detroit Tigers. I'm sorry, Miguel Cabrera. I had to do it. You're on the decline. Nick Castellanos' career is on an upward tick, while Miguel Cabrera, unfortunately, seems to be declining, which is why Nick Castellanos is the best player on the Detroit Tigers. So we've got the Los Angeles Angels, and I don't think I even need to explain this one, but I still will, because clearly the best player on the Angels is Mike Trout. He's the best player in all of baseball. Mike O'Down is one of the best players of all time. Yeah, Mike Trout's not bad, you know, hits 30 plus home runs, about 80 RBIs a year, hits above 300, on base percentage, over 450. I mean, he's Mike Trout. He's the best player in baseball. Well, it's obvious. I don't need to explain this one anymore. The best player on the Seattle Mariners is going to be Mitch Haniger. It would probably be Felix Hernandez if you asked me a few years ago, but Felix, similar to Miggy, on the decline, and it's not looking good for him. In 2018, Haniger hit 26 homers, 38 doubles, four triples, had 170 hits on the season, had a career-high 285 batting average, career-high on base at 366, career-high slugging at 493. I mean, you get the picture. He had a great season last year. So for the Seattle Mariners, the best player's got to be Mitch Haniger. The Houston Astros, one of the best teams in all of baseball. They've got talent at every single position. But there's one player that sticks out to me as the best on the Houston Astros, and that's Jose Altuve. Altuve won the MVP back in 2017, having the best year of his career. Since 2014, he's led the league in hits four times, getting over 200 hits in each of those seasons. Jose Altuve is the little baseball player that could. While he's short in stature, he makes only big impacts on the baseball field. And for those reasons, Jose Altuve is the best player on the Houston Astros. Texas Rangers, an interesting team. You've got a lot of young players who really have improved themselves just yet. But in my opinion, the best player on the Texas Rangers has to be Elvis Andrews. 2018 wasn't the best year for Elvis, only playing in 97 games due to injury. But in 2017, he had a breakout season, the best year of his career by far. So while Nomar Mazzara, Joey Gallo, Rubnet Odura, Jose Leclerc are all younger, cooler picks, Elvis Andrews is the best player on the Texas Rangers. The Oakland Athletics, a team that always just seems to get it done somehow. It's down to two players for me on the A's. You got Matt Chapman, who can do it all, and Chris Davis, who is a beast hitter. In my opinion, Matt Chapman is the best player for the Oakland A's. Not only can he swing the bat, but he is one of the best fielders in all the game. And like I said, he's no slouch at the plate last year. Year, he hit 42 doubles, 24 homers, 6 triples, hit 278 with a 356 on base, 508 slugging, to give him an OPS of 864, where he finished 7th in the MVP voting, and also won a gold glove for himself. Chris Davis, he'll hit you 40 plus home runs a year and he'll hit 247, but Matt Chapman will do it all, and that's why he's the best player on the Oakland A's. The best player for the New York Mets has to be Jacob deGrom. Won the Cy Young in 2018, having one of the best pitching seasons of all time, 1.7 ERA in 217 innings, struck out 269 batters, a whip of .912. Since being with the Mets in 2014, he has a career ERA of 2.69, career whip of 1.076. I mean, it's Jacob deGrom. He's so good on the mound. He's the best player on the Mets. It's just what it is. The Philadelphia Phillies added a lot of talent this offseason. JT Rao Muto, Andrew McCutcheon. But there's one player they added this offseason that I have not yet mentioned and it's because he's the best player on their team. That player is Bryce Harper. Not only does this dude have major star power, but when he steps up to the plate, he's one of the most feared hitters in all of baseball, and he's going to make that Philadelphia Phillies team a lot scarier than if they didn't have him. Aaron Nola, fantastic season last year, but the best player, it's gotta be Bryce Harper. He's just done it much longer, and he's he's Bryce Harper. He's amazing. For the Atlanta Braves, the best player is Freddie Freeman. His 162-game average is disgusting. 26 homers, 39 doubles, 3 triples, driving in 93 runs, batting average of 293, on base of 379, slugging of 497, OPS 877. Freddie Freeman is not only the best player on the Braves, but he's one of the best players in all of baseball. Now, as much as I think Anthony Rendon is one of the most underrated players in all of baseball, and I think he's a stud for the Nats, the best player on this team is Max Scherzer, and it's not even close. That's how good he is. Since coming to the Nationals, Max Scherzer hasn't finished lower than fifth in the Cy Young voting, winning two Cy Young awards in 2016 and 17, and arguably could have won it in 2018 if it wasn't for Jacob deGrom being insane. He's Max Scherzer. He's not only the best player on the Nationals, he's one of the best in all of baseball. The Miami Marlins, uh, similar to the Orioles, not a lot of choices here. You have Brian Anderson who put up a strong rookie year last year. Martin Prado, Miguel Rojas, I mean, the choices aren't great. So in my opinion, I guess the best player is Starlin Castro. I don't feel confidently on this one because while Starlin Castro does hit for good average, he just really isn't an amazing player, but the Marlins are bad. So that makes Starlin Castro the best player on the Marlins. Moving on to the National League Central, starting it off with the Chicago Cubs. A ton of talent on that team. Anthony Rizzo, 
Chris Bryant, Wilson Contreras. There's one player that has star quality and really sticks out to me as the best player on that team, and that's Javi Baez. Baez hit 34 homers, 40 doubles, 9 triples, drove in 111 RBIs, 290 batting average, 326 on base, 554 slugging, OPS at 881. This guy has an immediate impact for the Cubs when he's on the field, which is why Javi Baez is the best player on the Chicago Cubs. For the St. Louis Cardinals, the best player on that team has to be the newly acquired as well as newly extended first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt. Yes, Marcelo Zuna is great. Yes, Yadier Molina is a legend of the St. Louis Cardinals and he's been great for them for his entire career. But Paul Goldschmidt is one of the best players in baseball. Again, not enough people talk about how good this guy is. Paul Goldschmidt averages 30 30 plus home runs a year, hits 300, and on base percentage at 400, slugging 530, drives in 100 RBIs, he's going to hit 20 doubles, he's going to get close to 170, 180 hits a year, he plays gold glove defense, he steals some bases, there's nothing that Paul Goldschmidt can't do. Paul Goldschmidt is without a doubt the best player in St. Louis. For the Pittsburgh Pirates, it came down to two guys, one pitcher and one hitter. Jamison Tyone and Starling Marte. But for me, the best player on this Pittsburgh Pirate team has to be Starling Marte. He's a great center fielder, winning multiple gold gloves. He can swing the bat, hits for a good average. He's very fast on the bases, stealing 30 plus bases a year. So while Jamison Tyone has proven that he can be a great pitcher and very valuable for the Pirates, Starling Marte is currently the best player on that team. For the Cincinnati Reds, the choice is obvious, but I want to give a shout out to A. Eugenio Suarez because he has been an absolute beast recently for the Reds. He's definitely making a case to be the best player. But come on, it's the Cincinnati Reds. You can't talk about them without mentioning the name Joey Votto. While 2018 was a down year for Votto, only hitting 284 with 12 home runs, he still kept an on-base percentage above 400, was still an above-average hitter, and when you look at the previous three seasons, you see 30 home runs, 100 RBIs, an on-base percentage in the 450s, batting average above 300, slugging percentage above 550, OPS approaching 1,000. Joey Votto is a great player, one of the great hitters to play in the game. He's got to be the best player on the Cincinnati Reds. The Milwaukee Brewers have a lot of great players, Lorenzo Cain, Ryan Braun, but the best player on the team is the 2018 MVP, Christian Yelich. Since coming to Milwaukee, his career has taken off. In his first year with Milwaukee, he won an MVP, was an all-star, silver slugger, 36 homers, 34 doubles, 110 RBIs, hit 326 with a 402 on base, 598 slugging, and a 1,000 OPS, all of which led the National League. Christian Yelich has proved he is one of the best hitters in all of baseball, and therefore, he is the best player on the Milwaukee Brewers. And then finally, we end it off in the National League West. Going to get it started off with the Colorado Rockies. Their best player, it's Nolan Arenado. Rockies were smart to sign him to that huge contract extension, seven years, $260 million. That keeps him there till 2025 because he, again, is one of the best players in all of baseball. I don't want to hear the Coors effect. Nolan Arenado is a beast regardless of where he plays, and that's why he is the best player on the Colorado Rockies. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, man, has this one been a tough decision. The Dodgers have so much star power, but there's really three guys it comes down to. Clayton Kershaw, Cody Bellinger, Justin Turner. Turner and Kershaw have a hard time staying on the field. They do have some injury issues, but when they're on there, they're pretty good. But there's something about Cody Bellinger that makes him the choice as the best player on the Los Angeles Dodgers for me. 2018 was a bit of a struggle year. The power numbers did go down, but 2019, he is off to an insane start and he has cemented in my brain that he is going to be one of the best players in baseball this year. And this is no knock on Turner and Kershaw. Both of them, unbelievable. It pains me that I can't pick Clayton Kershaw, but the reason he doesn't get picked, he's just injured too much. You gotta be on the field, which is why Cody Bellinger is the best player of the Los Angeles Dodgers. The San Francisco Giants, not a lot going well for them. One of their best players in their franchise history, Buster Posey, it's just not really that good anymore. The offense just is bad. So of course, one of their best players has to be their pitchers because that's clearly their strong suit. And the best player for the Giants is Madison Bumgarner. The combination of the lack of offense from the Giants and well, Madison Bumgarner being a fairly good pitcher still, he's gotta be the choice for the San Francisco Giants. The Arizona Diamondbacks are definitely in the midst of a rebuilding phase, getting rid of a lot of their great players, including Paul Goldschmidt. But they do still have a player out in the outfield who has shown that he is very good. That player is gonna be David Peralta, 2018, a career season career high in home runs with 30, career high in RBIs, 87, 164 hits. David Peralta last year was a very solid player for the Dimebacks. And he's continued on that in 2019 with a hot start in 373 with nine doubles, two home runs. So on a roster that doesn't have a lot of talent in Arizona, David Peralta is definitely the diamond in the bunch, making him the best player for the Arizona Dimebacks in 2019. And then last but not least, the best player on the San Diego Padres is Manny Machado, the $300 million man. I love me some Fernando Tatis Jr., but I can't make him the best player on that team yet, especially 
when you have Manny Machado, one of the best players in all of baseball. San Diego, you got a good one in Manny Machado, and he's definitely the best player on your team. So those are the best players on every single Major League Baseball team. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions, whether I got it right or I got it wrong, down in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts. Remember to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. It's the best way to support the channel. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy baseball content. Like I said earlier, this is the place to be, so hit that sub button. Remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Giraffe Mark links in the description. And we're going to wrap the video up there. Thank you guys for watching. YouTube recommends you watch this video right here, as well as this is my most recent upload. So if you haven't seen either of those, click through them to help support the channel. Thank you guys for being so awesome recently. Crazy stuff on this channel. And I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Bye.